<laughs> it's so good to see you guys. Okay, so we have some questions for you for our Zoomy. Hi, Brooke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the wall of Brooke is behind her. I love it. For this show of yours, Samsara, it's really special and unique because of the way you've incorporated music and videography and poetry into your photography. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your decision to do this for the show and what that process looked like. Yeah, it actually started with this idea that I wanted to do mixed media instead of straight photography. And that idea came from this exploration that I was going through with the themes of death and grief and rebirth. And I kind of thought if I want to go deeper with that, then I should probably go deeper with my art too. And making it more hands-on and tangible just felt right for this because the work is so simple yet also quite gritty and sort of there's a lot of small details in it. So I love, I love how that turned out because if you look at every single one, you can see the, the dirt that went into the paint that went into it and all of that. And I just think that makes it um, a lot more visceral to look at. And that's what I wanted for this series. And so after I started the mixed media, I started thinking, well, what else could I include so that it's really a full sort of surround sound experience for people where it looks touchable, you know, like there's that physical element to it. There's the sound element. I wanted people to walk into the space and really immediately drop into that feeling that music gives you that is part of the show. And then I thought, well, it would also be super cool to do videos where maybe I could recreate some of the images themselves as moving images. Um, and so I pursued that. We also made um, a one to two minute like short film um, that sort of complemented the whole series. And then poetry was something that came about in a really interesting way. I was talking to somebody about how I love to eulogize people, which is like a really weird thing, but I just do it a lot. And so like in my head, I'll be driving and I'll just be like, okay, today I'm going to like write a eulogy in my head for so-and-so. And so I was talking to someone about how odd that is, <laughs> but also like, I find it really inspiring and kind of fun to do. And I always end up crying by the end of it, but it's like a good cry. And so anyway, this person that I was talking to, they were like, I wrote a eulogy once for a parent. And so I read their eulogy and then I took that home and I just started crossing out the eulogy and creating a poem out of the words of the eulogy. So it ended up being a redacted um, poem made from a eulogy. And that's what I did. I sort of put a call out for anybody who wanted to send me eulogies and I created poetry out of them and it's actually become quite a thing now so now like regularly people just send me eulogies that they wrote to sort of transform it into something else and it's been a really cool experience such a great idea wow you have such a unique really samsara in a lot of ways um, is designed to kind of make the viewer uncomfortable um so were there any points creating the series that made you feel uneasy Yes. <laughs> so many. <laughs> I mean, the first part was just starting it because this came from a really personal place for me where I was dealing with somebody very close to me who was suicidal. And I really, really wanted to respect that person and not share details about that situation. But I also wanted it to be personal. And so just starting the series was this sort of debate about with art, how much of it can be personal without sharing other people's lives at the same time. And so I went into it from a very introspective point of view where I thought this has to be about my experience with grief, not theirs, not somebody else's. And in doing that, I realized I just don't know enough about grief and about death and rituals and stuff like that. So I feel like every single image was quite difficult to craft because each one was this question of what's my relationship to grief and death, but also what is a, a separate cultural relationship to grief and death that I could draw inspiration from. So it became very uncomfortable, um, not to mention just some of the shoots themselves were highly uncomfortable, like trying to get a glass coffin commissioned from somebody and then filling it with 50 gallons of syrup. Like it was just hard to do. You know, a lot of them were just really challenging work. So um, yes, <laughs> very challenging. I think it's really interesting though, because I think everyone's uncomfortable at different points in their life, but people have such a hard time accepting that emotion and that feeling. And so it's so amazing to bring awareness to that, to be able to offer people this chance 
to be uncomfortable, but it to be in a safe place where they're just looking at your photograph. So they have a step removed back from it. Yeah. And I'm not even there. Yeah. I mean, and I've been, no, anybody who is. <laughs> yeah. right. Like it's so hard to get to a place where you think, yeah, I feel totally fine about dying one day. Like, I don't right. know anybody who feels that way. And if they do, I don't tend to believe them. Like, I feel like, are really, are you sure? Like you're totally cool with it. I don't know. And it's just, it's such a hard place to get to, but that's why I wanted to make this because I felt, you know, when confronted with mortality, I felt so instinctually terrified of it that I didn't want to feel that way and I thought if I can do this now in my life then maybe as I progress I will get more and more comfortable with the idea and I think that's been really true I mean I still have those nights where I'm laying in bed and I have that existential dread of like my death is coming when is it coming what's it gonna be what's it gonna be like but But if you can sort of at least become close to the idea and comfortable with thinking about the idea, then I think that makes life just so much more worth living. I really believe that you cannot live fully without acknowledging your mortality. It's just not possible because it's the knowledge that we will die that makes life so special and so incredible. And that's why these pieces mean so much to me and and why I've loved being around them for these years that I've been making them because I look at them and yeah, they're a bit dark, some of them, but also there's beauty and light in each one of them. And it reminds me that it's okay to experience the darkness as long as you look for the beauty. And that's what the show means to me. And how did you go about learning about different cultures and religious views on their ideas of death and what that entailed? What was your process like for that? Yeah, it actually started on a trip that I took. I, it was in, I think, 2014. I, I traveled to India, not for the first time, but for the first time when I had seen death really up close, where I went on this motorcycle tour and we thought it was just going to be like a fun tour of the city. And it was not, it was like a death tour. It was so bizarre. And so one of the places we went to um, was a crematorium where they just, they kind of walked us in and they said, this is where people get cremated. And it's like an open air kind of arena stadium sort of situation. And they just invited us to sit and watch like somebody be cremated. And I was like, what is, what is this tour? Like this was supposed to be fun, but the family really invited us in and they were like, please sit, watch. Like they were so open about it. And I started thinking, this is so weird. Like in America, if somebody just walked into someone's funeral, the family wouldn't be like, Hey, join us. Like, that's not okay. And then right after that, on the same tour, we were just driving down the street and we saw a hearse um, drive by, which was made of glass. And so you could see in to see the dead body on display, just driving through the street, which was shocking to witness. And I just realized like, this is a whole culture that deals with death totally different from how I do and how pretty much everyone I know does. So I started researching from there, um, you know, like what's a ritual in Tibet that is cool or in Indonesia or like all these places where I've never considered what grief is like. And I realized that grief is a celebration in so many cultures. And that doesn't mean that people aren't devastated or upset, but that it's okay to be devastated and upset. And it's a communal experience. And that really inspired me to expand the series and to make the the thinking about death, that process, that that process of grief, a communal experience um, in the gallery as well. So do you think that's changed your specific viewpoint on death and mortality? And if so, how has that changed for you? Oh, yeah, you know, I started this in 2016, actually, that was when I made the first image for it. And it changed since then. And I ended up creating, I think it was like 55 different pieces over those years. And I whittled it down now to, I think, 29 print pieces and a few others. But um, yeah, it was, it's been it's been wonderful to see it evolve and to see how I've changed from that point in time to this point in time and just just knowing the evolution that came with it that, that's necessary to come with it when you create art that's dark and that's a little weird and that makes you think about things that are you know aren't usually at the top of your brain it, it really changes your perspective every day. I mean, when I started the series, I was embarrassed to tell someone that I was feeling grief or that I was feeling sad. And and I think that that's pretty common probably for a lot of people to not want to share that because you don't know how you're going to be met with that information. And 
And it, it re I realized that in our culture, if there aren't works like this, or if there aren't people speaking out about their personal experience, then other people feel like they can't speak about theirs. And I, it has become my mission in life to talk about grief and specifically disenfranchised grief, which is grief that isn't, um, largely accepted by society. And I think the more we talk about it, the more open we can be. I feel incredibly more open about this topic than I used to. And that has brought me so much relief and joy. And, and I've heard from countless people who have said thank you to me for just talking about it openly. And, you know, it's a chain effect. It's like, it, I, I do it. I make the work. People look at it. They talk about it. And that keeps rippling. And I think that's so beautiful. Yeah. And it's just, you have such a lightness about you as a person. So, <laughs> you know, to see all this come out of you, it, you know, having known you all these years, yeah. um, it's, it's, it's amazing. But um, I really think that it's because I make work that's dark that I can feel so light and joyful so much of the time because I'm not holding that in, you know, anytime I have a dark thought, it immediately gets spit out into my art and then I can just have a good day, you know, and it feels awesome. Yeah. It is a beautiful series. I, I mean, the beauty of the work is definitely expressed. Thank your, you. I, I love how you displayed it specifically <laughs> too, because there's something about that white wall and just that grid of all those dark, dark pieces that, oh, uh, it just, it makes my dark heart happy. <laughs> I mean, life is a communal experience. So this feels amazing to do. And you bring us much joy. And yes. uh, Oh, you guys bring me so much joy. <laughs> I'm so excited about this exhibition, this show. I'm so grateful to you for doing it and taking a chance on it because it is so dark and so weird. And it's just, it means so much to me. We'll see you soon. I can't yeah. wait. All right. Okay. Bye. 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 See ya.